Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Braggaton. Let's continue exploring Lapidus Mortis, or Lapidus Mortus. I will absolutely take eight plasteel. Two adamantine isn't a lot, but it is a lot more than zero, so I'll take it. This isn't worth it, but we do have extractiums to spare, and it minimizes the need to come back to this system. And three Xenotech. Charred Ruins. Charred Ruins have been detected on the planet's surface. The architecture, building materials, layout, and passages betray their Xeno's origin. There are currently no signs of Xeno activity on the planet, and the ruins seem to be abandoned. I run a detailed scan. The burnt husk of an Imperial shuttle has been found in the heart of the ruins. The pilot's remains are badly damaged. It would seem the shuttle smashed into the building at full speed, causing the fire that destroyed it. We'll do option one. A Sister Argenta believes the crew has found the remains of a martyr who sacrificed themselves to protect humanity from the Xeno's threat. She proposes to erect a monument and hold a service in their honor. Hundreds of crew members disembark to honor the nameless hero, while many more remain on board to listen to a vox cast of the liturgy and the somber gloom of the decks. Even though the pilot's name is unknown, their sacrifice will be remembered in the hearts of the Imperium's true children. A vigilant member of the Augur crew has detected a small Xenos vessel drifting through the void. The ship is unpowered and shows no signs of being crewed. Open fire on the inhuman scum. One macro cannon salvo is enough to turn the pitiful ship into a cloud of dust. That takes care of that. So I think we'll hold off on Vibo 6 for now and go back and take care of some side quests on Footfall. I will bathe this battlefield in righteous fury! Victory is imminent! At your back and call. Vow is to serve. Combat is 
an equation. Your life is a negligible variable. Pretty solid first turn. Oh, I can do that. You have a second turn. Oh, there he is. I didn't see the uh, word bearer down here. Let's see to it. Go hand in hand. Indeed. At your beck and call. It will be done. <laughs> An exemplary strike. I will endure. Argenta. is worthless. I'll do it. This strike is a prayer. I'll see to it personally. For the throne's glory. Everyone, step aside. I won't object to it. I'm done with this one. I'll see our foes obliterated. Try to get him into position. It probably won't work. That's as far as he can go. Battlefield air is good for my lungs. Me, never in a thousand sectors. Really? Out of range. Well, I'll be.
You've got a problem, I've got a price. The Omnissiah knows all. Comprehends all. Running by Neric Overright. Don't get too cocky. Alright, Hanrix, you know where you the have to go. Is on our side. Naturally. Shireen, you find a spare minute on footfall when you're not deciding our lackluster fates. I'd be delighted to see you at my Amara car and the Amasekis. I'll tell Octi to set aside some decent wine in case you decide to grace our humble party with your luminous presence. Amara car, is that some kind of celebration? It is an occasion celebrated on my world, Ifrit. It is the day when a person shows by their actions that they have reached maturity, that their spirit is ennobled. Among the Africian nobility, this day is considered more important than other symbolic events, such as the first cry or the day of repose. And by a wonderful coincidence, my Amara car happens to fall on the day when I also wish to celebrate my acquisition of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale. And what kind of people will be at this party? Smugglers and thieves? Only my nearest and dearest are invited. People whose visage makes my heart sing, my eyes glisten, my lips bloom with praises for the Exalted One. That's not to say that you won't encounter thieves or smugglers among them. They make up the majority, in fact. It would be my pleasure to attend your party. The lowly regulars of the Amasekis will be telling their great-grandchildren about the time they had the honor of witnessing your dazzling visit to that unworthy dive, Shireen. That is, of course, if they live long enough to see their great-grandchildren. Oh, she went straight there. Fair enough. And it's also making us go straight there. That works out, because then on our way out, we can speak to Opticon 22, boost our profit factor, and then go straight to the ship. I'll have to backtrack. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. Open your larders. Give us all you've got, or else we'll just take it ourselves. Yeah, right. Run back to your holes, rats. If you've nothing to eat, it's not my problem. These peasants are engulfed in flames of maroon and yellow. In a few moments, despair and hunger will overwhelm them, burn them from within, smother their fear of death, and become a storm of grimy crimson. What is going on here? Please, your lordship. I'm not to blame for any of this. This riffraff wants to rob the bar. They say they got nothing to eat. The guard spits. I brandish your weapon. Hunger won't kill you this instant, but this might. The rider backs away. What the... We just can't catch a break. Come on, people. All we're getting here is our brains splattered. So I wonder if we had upheld our end of the bargain with... of Ladame, if this event would have even happened. Because we didn't bring supplies from Yetis. I always keep my options open. Alright, so there's our companion. Loop around this way first. Let's talk always to this guy. Keep your eye on the price. I'm glad to see you again. There truly was a cache hidden in the old bridge. Sadly, it had been plundered already. It was to be expected. 
The puzzle is several centuries old, and the locals are quite adept at gutting, dismantling, and breaking anything that catches their eye. But the very fact that the cache ever existed gives me hope. It means that there could be others. I found a hidden nook inside the lantern. It had clues to the whereabouts of other caches. That is incredible news. This is the first inspiring thing that has happened to me since the day I came to Footfall. Please do not stop searching. I'm dying to know what this puzzle from the days of the station's youth is about. I found the final cache in the chain. I had a message from Parsimus Dewayne. It was the creator of Footfall himself who devised this series of riddles. A message from Dewayne himself. His eyes light up. The great dreamer and visionary. I should have guessed. Dewayne was passionate about his designs. It's no wonder he personally oversaw the creation of the booklet that described it and even included a puzzle for the keen-minded. It's as if he spoke to me through the ages back then just to lead me here. I... I feel I've been granted an honor. He takes a deep breath. I'm sorry. I should be thanking you first and foremost. For listening to me. And then solving the puzzle and then finding the time to tell me. Now I finally feel like it hasn't all been for nothing. I have an offer for you. Now that the puzzle from the booklet has been solved, how would you like to become my resident expert on all matters architectural? You can see dozens of worlds traveling aboard my ship. Such good fortune is beyond even my wildest dreams, exclaims Gorday, practically bouncing in his seat. I'd be delighted to serve you and the interests of your dynasty. I believe I could offer you sound advice if you decided to build a cathedral or something even more impressive. And I'll see to it that the Imperium architecture of the Cronus Expanse that I'll be fortunate enough to witness is all well documented. I'll head to your ship at once. Thank you. So I wonder if he would have offered extra dialogue on some of the worlds that we explored. We found mysterious architecture in quite a few planets. You easily spot Jai and the group crowded around the table. The extravagant luxury of her attire and her gleaming augments set her apart from the rest. Seeing you, she exclaims, May the gravitational wells on your worlds never lack for grip, just as my heart never lacks for joy at the sight of rogue trader Von Valantius. With an approving chuckle, Octavia Octaviana mutters. I just want to say Octavia. Uh, I can't believe. You actually roped the rogue trader into coming to your party. If the rogue trader raises a toast to your health, I'll start to believe you really are a princess, not just a, and not just a smuggler with a gift of gab. Please take a seat, your lordship. Observe the assembled group. Jai's friends look exactly as you would expect, like hardened operators of the cold trade, arrayed in the forbidding but glitzy style common to those who like to skirt the limits of the law. One pair in particular catches your eye, a young man and woman, twins it seems, identical yet distinct from each other. The man has a lively face and a crazed look in his eye, while the woman is cold and calm and seems slightly drowsy. Octaviana readily tops up the glasses on the table, playing the role of consummate host, but you notice that her and Jai's chairs are drawn slightly closer together than usual, where pairs seem connected only by superficial acquaintance. Uh, how's your party going? We've been laughing and celebrating life, Shireen, as true friends do. But until your arrival, we were but stars in a moonless sky, merely heralding your coming. Now we are happy. I right, join the group. I'll gladly accept your offer. Octaviana draws out a bottle from under the table. The glass is as thick as your finger and is covered in wax seals. With no exaggeration, this is the finest amisect that has ever graced this bar. Jai personally acquired it, as she says, for a special occasion. It seems that you are the special occasion, your lordship. The crowd around the table falls silent, exchanging awkward looks. But it appear they are unaccustomed to drinking in the presence of lofty individuals such as you. Uh, Octaviana, you and Jai are friends. Octaviana offers you an arch smile. Friends, she's my worst enemy. The vengeful spirit of retribution sent to punish me for my youthful transgressions. Be careful saying vengeful spirit. You might summon the ship itself. Uh, Mistress Hydari has a special gift for knocking me off balance and dragging me into difficulty. 
I would have barred her from the Amasekis long ago, if it weren't for her habit of tossing money around the, like confetti, and of paying triple for anything she breaks. Do you see, Shireen? Do you see the petty, miserly, callous, unforgiving friends the Exalted One has sent me? I look at the people around the table. So these are your associates. The precious roses in the garden of my soul, and the golden little bees that bring honeyed riches to my treasure house. Yes, this is my crew of cold traders. The two identical ones are the trickster twins, my closest associates. Thor, our resident hothead, his much wiser sister Tora. So I'm pretty sure Kor was killed, right? The event we had in space. Also, we have some overlapping NPCs here. But he should be dead. Uh, don't let her fool you, your lordship. She's only calling me, calling us me. She's only calling us. They should be me. She's only calling me a precious rose because you're here. When it's just us, I'm lucky if I get that uh, jerk with the gun. Or chuckles good naturedly. Because you're the jerk with the gun. If I drag you out of as many scrapes as Jai has, that's not the name I'd be using for you. I can tell you that much. Poor sister rolls her eyes. Pay no attention to his, your lordship. Poor has nobody to blame for himself for that nickname. So I butt himself in that nickname. Uh, what were you talking about before I arrived? Business. My dear Tora, whose mind never strays from the chilly peaks of the mountains of money she's made, was telling me the latest cold trade news. Exciting times are upon us. We're not the only ones being tested for weak spots. Ladame said on putting the ultra requisite ult, yeah, ult requisitors out of business. And it looks like he's got Mercy's blessing to do it. The big beasts are picking off the small ones. I think things are only going to get more interesting from here on out. That means it's time for us to step up and become major players, eh? Poor winks at Jai. I know a couple of Chegnars from the ult requisitioners. The dry as you like. We could tell them to cool their heels with us, and they'll be more willing at the other altars. We could take on Falco, and even blow Vladame out of the airlock too. Or my sweet, before you go chewing Faisaline with Chegnars, you need to clear the altar and hide the pulses. If Vladame's playing all the lines, he won't touch me, but I don't want to shift the risk onto you. This chatter about the commission, Conversation quickly turns into an impenetrable mishmash of terms from the secret argot of cold traders. <laughs> Looks like he has a fancy sword. That's Falco. The man who has just approached the table is hideous by anyone's standards. A repulsive face, greasy hair, and bulging veins at his temples. His attempt at an amiable smile is so transparently false and off-putting. Your fingers itch to reach for your weapon. With a surprised look askance at you, he says, Mistress Hidari, allow me to wish you a happy Amarikar. Master Mercy cannot let such an occasion go unmarked. He sends his warm wishes and a gift. Oh, Falco, I am much obliged and touched by your presence. May the fire in your hearth burn forever bright and hot like the stars of the Grimnor system. Tell Mercy that this show of his precious attention toward my humble self brought dew to my eyes and a song to my heart. A whisper talk to Viana. Isn't Falco the one who stole Jai's cargo? The very same. A greasy piece of Grok's crap. Octaviana says, wearing the sweetest, most amiable smile one could imagine. But the stars of the Gremnor system all died around 100,000 years ago, and the systems around them are true breeding ground of death. Is it customary in the Caspalica to attend the parties of people you have tried to ruin? After you got involved in their turf war, they all decided that a peaceful resolution would be for the best. This here is a symbolic confirmation of the ceasefire. Uh, who is this Mercy? It's a big mysterious figure in the mission. The Caspalicas put him here to keep a handle on things, and to make sure the interests of the senior partners aren't forgotten. If anyone does become a bit forgetful, Mercy comes alone, somebody dies. Everyone else panics and empties their pockets. Falco and Mercy aren't officially connected. Falco is just another prosperous mission agent like Jai, and other people. But Falco is happy to do Mercy's dirty work for him. That's why he gets preferential treatment. 
Uh, where's your present for Jai, Falco? The smuggler stares at you unblinkingly with his pale eyes, saying nothing. Then he rearranges his mouth into a smile remarkable in its hideousness. Of course, your lordship. And this gift is for me personally, Mistress Hydari. As Falco turns away from the table, you see a snarl of feral hatred twist his already repulsive features. Even foes are bowing down before Jai Hydari. That is something worth celebrating. What better way to celebrate than with a game? With stakes, naturally. Today is my Amara car, and that's what I want. Jai draws a stack of carved plasteel from tiles from her pocket. They are decorated with symbols and fine mag lines. Holding the tiles in one hand and raising her glass with another, Jai asks, What do you think, Shireen? Does the rogue trader have anything he's willing to wager? You recognize the tiles in Jai's hand. It is a set for a Tanto Lo, a game popular among gamblers. Each player is dealt several tiles, which can be arranged into a pattern of a specific value by carefully matching up the mag lines. Whoever has the highest value wins. Voidsmen love playing Tanto Lo, which is usually won by luck or skill. I do not know the rules. It's easy. Every player is dealt a few tiles. The tiles are connected by mag lines, and there are lots of possible combinations. You arrange the tiles in a design that has a particular value, and whoever has the highest value wins. Talking a mile a minute about the rules and tile combination, Jai definitely shuffles a stack of tiles. Raise your goblet and salute. I shall play. Watch out for his lordship, lads. He was awfully quick to agree just now. I have a sneaking suspicion about how the rogue trader acquired all his countless riches. But I'll warn you now, playing for money is considered wrong on Ifrit, because gaming is tempting fate. So instead, we're going to play for wishes. A pile of tiles is placed in front of you and the other players. Right, look at your hand. You've been dealt a poor hand. You cannot make a high value arrangement from the tiles. Glancing at her tiles and grinning, Jai declares resolutely, I'm going to show you my hand. The exalted one loves me today. And if one doesn't show one's hand, what then? You have a chance to bow out of the game without losing. They can only do that before someone announces they're going to show their hand. Alright, so I know that I have a bad hand. I'm going to risk it anyway. Maybe call her bluff. I'm going to show my hand as well. <laughs> Chuckling, Jai tosses her tiles onto the table. Her hand is significantly better than yours or anyone else's. And for my wish, I want everyone to drink to my good fortune. It has already granted me a gift fit for a queen. I'm talking about you, Shireen. May fortune continue to smile upon me. Everyone at the table eagerly raises their glasses. You join in before you're even aware you have done so. A new stack of tiles is already waiting for you on the table. Realize that moments have skipped past without your knowing. It seems the Amasek is somewhat stronger than you thought. Look at your new hand. The pictures on the tiles are spinning slightly, arranging themselves into good patterns and then offensive phrases. When you look up, you see that everyone else apart from Jai has already tossed their tiles onto the table in disappointment. It's just us two left, Shireen. I'm going to show my hand. Alright, lay out your tiles. Read them and weep. The sight of your hand sets everyone at the table into a flurry of excitement. But then the chatter turns into a roar of triumph. Jai's hand is the most valuable in the game. I win again. I wish that I wish of you, Shireen. I request a kiss, when the opportunity presents itself. An intrigued smile appears on Jai's face. I love playing for high stakes, Shireen. An excellent suggestion. This is a debt I will definitely call in. Tiles are dispersed around the table, forming piles in front of each player. You suddenly feel your body grow heavy. The treacherous Amasek is slowly robbing you of your clarity and of thought and dexterity. 
Jai, you wouldn't be cheating by any chance. How could you even suggest such a thing, Shireen? Has Jai Haidari really fallen so low that someone could think me capable of deceit? Jai brings her hand to her chest in a tragic gesture, the approving guffaws of her associates. Now look at your tiles. Your hand is not especially good or bad. It is the kind of hand played only by someone desperate who has nothing left to bet. Before anyone says they're showing their hand, I'm announcing a condition, seeing as it is, or seeing as it's my Amara card today. The only stake I'll play for is a dance. I'll play. Show your hand. Glance at your hand. Jai discards her own tiles face down. Mine are worse. Looks like you've won, Shireen. I'll be delighted to grant you a wish. The light plays on Jai's dark skin and glints off the silver augmetic on her throat. Moving with the grace of a sand snake, she holds your gaze and smiles uh, mischievously. Mischievously. Misch mischievously. There we go. <laughs> Her dark curls fall across her face. You see the saucy glint in her eyes through the, her alluring curtain of hair. This dance is called the Dance of the Captive Ravanian Girl. When the governor of Ifrit, Selimkan, the Bright, crushed the Ravanian Rebellion, the daughter of the rebel leader was brought to him, the beautiful Nayana. She danced for him, telling him of the struggle of her proud people. And they snatched a weapon from a guard's hands and aimed it at Selimkan. But the spark of love that had kindled between them that day stopped the Faisaline from igniting in the cartridge. Both Nayana and Salemkin lived through that day, and many more days, which they spent together. Now let us drink to the Lady of the Hour, Jai Haidari. The assembled group bursts into approving cheers, and the bar fills with the sound of clinking glasses. The Amasek tastes exorbitantly expensive sweeping you into a, a kaleidoscope of flavors. Tart floral bitterness, honeyed sweetness, and then other far more refined sensations that are nameless, owing to the small number who can afford to experience them. <laughs> Bravo, Octi. This Amasek will do me very well. Very well indeed. Jai's self-satisfied reply elicits general laughter. The tension at the table seems to loosen slightly. Uh, that is enough betting for me. My luck is very fickle today. Unlike Amasek, you can always trust Amasek. It always lies. Smiling sweetly, Jai presses your goblet into your hand. Her skin seems to glow from within, and the sparks of laughter in her eyes dance like flames. By the throne, you are so beautiful, Jai. Leaning in, she whispers in your ear. I know, Shireen. Fox follows your mind and appealing ideas of other ways you could amuse yourself at this party. Surrendering to the maelstrom of chaotic thoughts, let the all-pervading merriment de determine your fate. Oh, we're already back on the bridge. Thoughts tumble violently inside your head, periodically ricocheting off the inside of your skull and triggering bursts of piercing pain. Your tongue feels desiccated and shriveled in your mouth, and it scrapes painfully against your teeth. Light. Light is the enemy. Self-awareness returns unbidden, bringing with it an inexplicable sense of awkwardness. Your beleaguered body violently protests against the very idea of getting out of your soft bed. You have a soft side beside you. Looking over, you see dark hair fanned out across your pillow. Jai, who is cozied up next to you fast asleep, is fully dressed, just as you are. Or perhaps she's not asleep at all. Shireen, you certainly know how to have a good time. I try to remember the end of the party. You struggle to piece together your fragmented memories of last night's carousing. For some reason, you can clearly recall the ingratiating looks of the wardens 
they try to persuade you to stop. The cries of the beggars to whom you gave an obscenely amount of alms, and the stamping of the servitor that you rode around the station to Jai's unconcealed glee. How did the night end? I don't remember all of it. I think we shot at some people. Over their heads. Someone didn't offer us the required amount of respect. Then you said that flying a shuttle was easy, and that you'd bet your warrant that you could get us to the ship. We also stripped a man and burned his clothes because a sight of them offended the Exalted One. I can still smell the singed fibers now. You can smell it too. You feel slight burn marks on your fingers. You notice one more thing. Your lips feel rough and dry, but like they have been nipped over and over by another's teeth. How did you end up in my chambers? I helped you get back to your quarters, and then I couldn't find the door to get out again. And you graciously gave up. 35% of your bed for me. Yes, I think that's the number our haggling ended on. You and I, we did not fall into bed together just to sleep, did we? Turning her remarkably fresh-looking face to you, Jai smirks. You don't remember anything at all, Shireen. Neither do I. All the better. What sweet and thrilling scenarios we can imagine to fill in the gaps. We need to make ourselves presentable. I'm sorry to say you're right, Shireen. No matter how soft the bed or how pleasant the company, there's a line we must not cross. And I'm perilously close to doing exactly that by getting a couple of bottles of delicious medicine for our aching heads. The sacred call came from the production lines of Kiava Gamma. Now, so we got a couple pieces of equipment. So we got the exotic venom blade. There's something else. Mercy's something. Mercy's Gift. Right, so the Exotic Venom Blade is a Drakari weapon. And it has Venomous Strike instead of Hallucinogen Strike. The melee attack that poisons enemies with Toxin. In Mercy's Gift... But while in combat, the wearer of this cloak gains a plus 15 bonus to fellowship whenever there are no enemies in a 4 cell radius. So basically the opposite of what I currently have equipped. You are spoiling me with the splendor of your presence again, Sherin. Have you decided to treat your soul to the fruits of my eloquence? Or do you wish to discuss business with the newly appointed owner of a Mercatum Tabula Officiale? Jai smile shines brighter than any star you've seen. Read that before. Oh. Alright. Let's go to Footfall real quick. Speak to Opticon 22. Hopefully get at least two more profit factor. Is there money to be made? So we got three profit factor. Let us not dawdle. Just one more than we needed for the next piece of ship equipment from the Imperial Navy.
All right, so the X470 Ultimo Array, just an upgraded auger array, provides void ship weapons with targeting data, granting 90% hit chance, the same as the previous one, and a 20% critical hit chance, which is four times the critical hit chance of the previous one. It is quite the upgrade. Also, I wonder if that'll allow us to look at those two planets. It's so really close. Hitting the next level with the Explorators and the Caspalica. Oh, that's pretty interesting. It's not really used combat stimulants. That might incentivize me to do so. But they almost always have a drawback, so. I'd not really eager to use them anyway. Alright, I'm gonna call it here, and next time we'll probably head to Vibo 6. I'm gonna look over the rumors off camera and make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I'll save that for off camera and determine if there's anything I need to pursue before we go to Vibo 6, because I feel like. Once we go to Vibo 6 and then go to Dargonis, we're going to be streamlined back into the main story. But we'll see. Either way, for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.